this was a commission by Arthur Hannon for one of his books in his Cretacea game. So the Cretacea game is a game all about dinosaurs in combat, uh, which was quite a popular little Kickstarter that he ran. It was quite successful. Um, and this was going to be for one of the additional books he was going to be producing. So I wanted to get the sense of there being a huge battle between several different dinosaurs happening and um, so I wanted to get the major players so you the herbivores the carnivores and of course I added in the flying pterodactyl as well which he hadn't put in the rule book but anyway so again I started with the basic pencil work to um, get the shapes of where everything is as you can see um, the Triceratops, I, I manipulated the size of his um, helmet headpiece thing. Um, it was too small before, and I adjusted that. And then once I've got the details worked out in pencil, I then ink in everything. And this is one of the first times I was actually using a brush pen that I'd picked up in Japan. Um, and um, I've uh, come to love those as a uh, nice way to create line work. Um, and I have several of them now. So the T-Rex, uh, as you can see here with his one leg, um, I was in two minds as to whether this actually worked. So you've got the Triceratops being pushed uh, out of the way with the right leg of the, um, which is the left side from the way you're viewing it, of the um, T-Rex. And it, it kind of seems like an awkward position, but um, the way it kind of works, if you think spatially of how the dinosaurs are actually standing next to one another, um, it is anatomically probably a little bit more accurate. But um, in terms of looks, uh, I'm not 100% happy with it. But, you know, it's one of those things you, you move on. Um, uh, that's a hindsight sort of thing when it comes to drawing these kinds of things. Oftentimes you look at something and you notice something that you maybe could have done differently or you might have tried a different technique or something to that effect. That's always going to be an aspect of anything you do. So, um, you know, it's just continue on and move on to the next piece and learn and iterate. So I this... Oh, what do we got here? Three central dinosaurs, uh, one at the bottom left and and a large T-Rex entering the image on the right-hand side. And then there's a pterodactyl in the air, which hasn't been inked yet. So I, if you see a lot of my trees, they tend to be very similar in the way that um, I draw them. Not that many trees look like that, but it's a shortcut motif to kind of just solidify the idea of a tree in a person's mind so the like woodpecker holes that appear everywhere um i enjoy that sort of thing the, and as i said in a previous video about knotted wood when i'm doing wood texture um it's something that i do um quite a lot and when i talked about adding little details and things into the image uh, you can see in the tree there there's a few little eggs lying in the hollow of the tree so these are the sort of details and little stones on the ground and flecks of grass and that sort of thing. Um, and of course, uh, it's important to determine the primary light source, which you can see the circle in the sky there um, is the main setting sun, um, the sort of dinosaur age. So uh, I replaced that with an actual um, circle drawn with a proper... Um, a proper circle uh, is a, you know, a plastic thing that has a whole bunch of different circles of different sizes um, so that you get a very clean round edge rather than um, it being hand drawn which can lead it to look a little bit lopsided and that sort of thing. So important to have the primary light source because it's again to going to help you determine where everything should be in terms of shadows and that and I go over the shadow, the, the go over the creatures again with pencil, even though the pencil has been erased, I go again to sort of lay out where the various shadows are going to be and then fill them in with markers. Um, and, you know, some of the um, 
details areas, I then go to a, a smaller marker or a, or a pen in order to um, get those details in. Now, one of the reasons for doing that is yeah, I'm laying out where all the shadows are going to be. So from the primary objects and then lay out the secondary objects and that sort of thing to um, to give a sort of a, 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 a feeling of of shape. So the shadows help in terms of it's selling the idea of a three-dimensional object. Um, and I think this is very, very important. Uh, even though we've got one light source, you can imagine that there's actually more than one light source because it would the sun would be reflecting off other things that would be outside of the image. And so that's why everything in the image is not exactly in shadow at the front. Now, there's one or two little mistakes that do occur in this, and I'll sort of try to point them out as, as they go, um, in terms of the dimensionality. Um, when you're doing an image like this, uh, it's quite heavy on detail. So when you're doing uh, lots and lots and lots of different shadows and lots and lots of different spatially um, organic objects, um, it becomes quite difficult to actually track and remember where absolutely everything is so you've got to be concentrate quite a lot on on making sure that you're um, keeping to the right motif and keeping to the right light source and all that kind of stuff so there's one or two minor little problems in here um, that uh, i will touch on but by and large it's um, the light source is primarily from the sun in the sky and the, there's reflections of things that are not in the image. So I do a little bit of texture with the shadows, just to be, especially on the tree and things like that, uh, where there's going to be some rough texture. But when we texture the actual dinosaurs themselves to differentiate them, um, then the texture will have slightly different um, look and shading to it that was kind of be blended into these block areas of of shadow so it's good to just block out the primary shadows first and then work on what's going to be um, you know how the edges are going to blend into whatever texture you're going to be using on the creatures or whatever it is that you're drawing um, and one of the primary things here again I always talk about how I want to get movement in the in in my images um, so you've got these dinosaurs uh, the, you've got the scratch marks and the tears and the the sort of sense that the triceratops is leaning to one side out of the under the weight of the fighting t-rex um, and the v velociraptor coming in the bottom left has got open mouth um, as it's um, coming into the scene and there's not so much movement in the second uh, T-Rex because that's basically used to frame the image um, and as I go through the um, with the marker in the background that's I'm just doing a little bit of texture there to kind of differentiate the mountains in the back and the hills in the back from the foreground when we do the final texture layer. So it's looking pretty good as it is at the moment, but of course, you know, we, we want to go to a lot more because everything's kind of, you know, the same and we want to blend them in. So one of the things I start with at the back and move forward, um, and I do a pointillist technique on smoke and clouds and things to get a particular kind of feel to it um, so that you that's how you get the sort of densities the more dots you use the denser it is the less dot you use so you get basically light and dark patches um, and then i moved into a the look of scales now i did use photographic reference for scales to get different sort of scales of to what should be used uh, i did use photographic reference for t-rexes and triceratops and also for the um velociraptors um, but they weren't in the poses that you see so I basically had to design the pose um, thinking about the anatomy of the creature I saw in other images and build up from there 
So th uh, they were not exact replicas, um, it was basically I'd use them for reference for how is the head shaped, uh, how does the neck work, how, where are the arms and the legs and all that kind of thing. Now you can see the texture in the Triceratops is different, even though I'm using the same sort of texture as the T-Rex, the actual texture is different. So when you're planning out these sort of things, consider how the texture may actually differ. Um, and also how the light interacts with that texture as well, because that's going to help to differentiate your, your different objects um, within the actual illustration. So again, the reason for this is to make them look different. Um, they may actually have scales that are basically identical, um, but I want them to look different. And also, you want to show the shape of the creature as well. So it went from being a flat white shape uh, with some edges that kind of made it look 3D, and now we're really using the texture to show the volume, and we're using the light on the texture to again further enhance the sense of three-dimensionality that, that all of these creatures have. So they begin to pop out of the paper. Um, and it, again, lends a lot of interest. The more detail there is, the more interest you can get. But you can go overboard with detail. Um, I do do that a lot. Um, uh, but uh, it all comes down to balance as to what's, what's actually going to be working out and what doesn't work out. And obviously it's up to the final viewer in the end whether they find the image interesting and they want to explore the image. Um, so as you see, there's a lot of different textures that are going into this. There's bones, there's scales, there's wings, there's um, so that you've got the, the stretched flesh of the pterodactyl wings, you've got clouds, you've got um, tree bark, you've got um, in the background, you've got rocks, uh, you've got grass at the bottom in the foreground, you've got leaves. So... You've got large texture, as in the leg and side of the T-Rex here, where I'm using a bit of cross-hatching between the scales to um, to fill that out, and then uh, just some loose uh, loose line work to give some dimensionality to those scales. And again, going darker and darker to um, to build up that that. Uh, sense of the light interacting with the object. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Again with the trees, I'm going to make it look like bark, um, and I uh, t tend to exaggerate the outside lines on certain things depending on the light that's falling on them. Um, and you'll see around the T-Rex's head, there's uh, on the left side of the T-Rex's head, I'm, I'm, I'm heading towards doing an almost like halo effect. So the sun, even though he's in shadow on that side, you'll start to see that I don't fill the texture in right up to the shadow on the side of its face. Um, and that's to give it sort of a halo effect so that its head stands out a bit more. So uh, that is a real thing. You do see haloing in, in, in photographs and things like that, but it's a little bit exaggerated here just to try and get it to pop out of the image. And as I've said, this is one of the things I try to do in all my illustrations, is try to have at least one thing that really does pop out. And I think in this one, that may be the T-Rex. Uh, eye work is quite detailed um, and it's very important with the eyes. You get the fear and you get the, 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 the bloodthirstiness of the T-Rex and the, the, um, interest of the Velociraptor in the bottom left, um, but you definitely need the terror in the eye of the Triceratops, and I think that's achieved quite well. Now, one of the problems we talked about earlier with the shadows, there should be a shadow down the bottom of the horns on the Triceratops um, that should cross over and join the two shadows underneath the leaves there, uh, so that that is an error, and that's basically due to the the complexity of this image, um, and that, that's you know you you have to you have to keep track. And this was done a long time ago, so you know I'm only noticing it now. And then of course I scan it in, do the curve work in Photoshop, 
And that's what it looks like once that is done. Thank you for joining me.